I just can't do this. I am gonna go blind. That's a little bit better. Better for the eyes. Guys, we're gonna talk about gear ratio. Right now, this truck is on 37s, and it has a 3.42 gear ratio, which is really bad for this size of tires. It's literally worse than towing a trailer full time. Basically, it's a lot of stress on this drivetrain. We're gonna put this truck at 456, but that's not gonna happen until two more days. So I figured, why not show you guys the biggest difference of going from a 3.42 gear ratio all the way to a 4.56 gear ratio with already having your enormous large tires that you should have waited to put on on. I wanted to do this for you guys. I wanted you to see the drag. I have had this truck on bigger tires since it had 400 miles on it. I put 35, 12 ply Toyos on it, which were a lot of weight. I already could tell a difference. And a 3.42 gear ratio is already pretty low. In my build sheet, this truck should have came with 3.73. And because it has the sport package, they threw in the 3.42s. It literally states that on the build sheet. So let's drive around a little bit. I'm gonna show you guys some RPM differences, some acceleration pedal differences. I have my OBD2 scanner plugged in so we can look at the differences on the pedal position and then compare it to what we do after we get our 456s on. Now to do this correctly, we're gonna have a startup test where we start out and we're gonna you know, film what goes on from there. We're gonna have a consistent high speed. I say high by a biting speed law, a biting <laughs> by abiding speed limit signs on the freeway. Now, the video that you're gonna see of the actual scan tool will be off of my phone because I don't have another memory card with me to carry the other camera. So, sorry. It is time. We are, we're dropping the truck off to get its gears. I'm excited. So it, it is at a place called Off-Road Bully here in Acton, California. They're amazing, you should check them out. They do a lot of Jeep stuff. They mostly do Jeep stuff. They are really cool people. I got to talk to them for a little bit. They are exceptional. Why am I not doing my own gearing? Because I don't know how much to do with backlashing and all that yet to where I feel comfortable of not blowing my differential up. I do a lot of automotive stuff and I haven't gotten to that point yet, but I will eventually. But right now I'm like, you know what? I just want it to be done correctly on this truck. So we're dropping her off and we'll get to see how she does when we get her back tomorrow. Woo! We're gonna go pick up the truck. It's only been like, I could probably count the hours. It hasn't even been a full day yet. So we're gonna go pick it up. My mom's right there. We're gonna go pick it up. And then, uh, <laughs> she doesn't wanna be on the camera. And then we're gonna see the comparisons. We are post gears now. You know, it's after the fact. Oh, okay. I didn't film for you guys because I was so like, wow, this is crazy. It's like a whole new truck. We are back to the location that we were when we first filmed our start off when we had our 3.42s. We're now gonna do it with our 4.56s and I'm gonna grab my scanner and I'm gonna plug it in real quick so we can kind of try to compare that again even though it's really hard for me to film both of those. But we're gonna do that just for the heck of it. And we're gonna see how they compare because they do. Now remember to keep in mind as well, my speedometer is still off about five to six miles per hour per se that we've been able to check so far. It does take the speedometer calculations from the wheels, but it, it does not calculate correctly still, so it's, I, I don't know. I don't know, guys, I don't know, okay? Okay guys, I'm really sorry about the quality of these photos here, but I kind of just took these from screenshots from the video that I was already taking. Now, to kind of better explain this, the top picture is from before gearing, and the bottom is after gearing. Now if you notice in the top picture, we're going 22 miles per hour at 2000 RPM, 
with a throttle of about 52%. Now down below, and it's also, sorry to correct myself, it's a pedal position, not a throttle, this is a diesel. Now on the bottom, we are going 23, because I wasn't able to get the 22, I kind of skipped it from 21 to 23 while accelerating, but this just proves the point. At the same 2000 RPM, but we're going 44 percentage on our throttle. Uh, again, pedal, <laughs> pedal position. So what that's showing us is we're around the exact same uh, RPMs, but we are actually like almost 10% lower on our throttles. We aren't pushing as much as we used to be. Now fast forward a little bit to this next speed position. Again, I couldn't match the 39 with the 39 because we skipped 39. So we have 39 before gearing and 40 after. This is where you start to see even more of a difference. So we're at 2000 RPM, pretty much both. I think after gearing, we're about 20, maybe 2000 50, not so much yet to 2100. And before gearing, we're at a 58 pedal position. While at, after gearing, you know, going even a mile per hour faster, we're at a 42.7. And we also can note we are probably almost exactly the same on the boost level. So maybe a little bit more boost on after gearing, like I'm talking a tad. So the differences you really get is that pedal position. You're not using as much horsepower and torque as you used to be to go the same speed hope hope that made sense to you guys so right now that's about 75 75 76 and we're 1500 rpms on flat we're gonna now start to go on some uphill but that's to give that uh kind of the rpm to speed match all right you guys can see now one of the biggest changes is definitely on the highway so if we go up to around 70, which would be about 75, 76 miles per hour in actual reality, uh, we are now at a, exactly 2,000 RPM. That's such a nice RPM range for accelerating. So if we want to switch lanes here and go faster, we have power it, almost just instantly. That was just with about 50% throttle. So you guys learned about gear ratio when we put gears in the truck and I hope you guys enjoyed watching all of that and seeing what you can do to not have stress on your big lifted truck. Otherwise, we'd be making a different kind of video saying how to blow up your transmission. So now that we have that all done, I am glad I got to take you guys with me. I've worn like four different outfits filming this video because of how many days it took to do this. But now you know something and now you can see the differences that it took to put in the gearing. And would you or would you not do gearing? Would you just say, you know what, Devin? I want top speed, man. I don't care if my transmission is stressed out. I'm stressed out, so who cares? Or are you gonna put the gears in and have that peace of mind? Let me know. Okay, great, thanks. You guys, look how freaking massive <laughs> this pinion is. This is the stock 342. Oh my, the weight this thing has, crazy. <sighs> yeah, it's been a little bit better. The Ram has got new tires. We do have this very aggressive bubble stretch right here, but it protects the rim, you know? So I'm not complaining too much about that. And it barely, barely, barely clears. But they look really nice on this truck. They add that traction that I desperately so needed. And you can see there, it looks great on both sides. Okay, I had to take a quick break. I just did a seven mile bike ride. Yeah, guys, I haven't done that in a long time. Kinda of left me out of breath. I burned 265 calories. Gotta get back to the video.